So we have thermometer, shovel, saw, <laughs> and a ram penetrometer. And then we also have a, a bucket that we use to sample snow. So if we had new snow, one of the things, first things you do here, we would take a sample of that snow, much like a cookie cutter. We're just taking that, that amount of snow, pull that off the board, tilt that over, slide that out. She got a thin little sheen of freezing rain as we're having today. And then that would be, we'd bring it over here and weigh it. And see what we did did actually get a little bit of freezing rain in that so, so what do you what do you learn by weighing it, what, so what it the, you? when we weigh it we we find out how much water is in that snow sample so we're not just looking at like how how much snow there is but the, the vo actual volume of that snow and as a rule of thumb we typically one inch of of water is 10 inches 10 to 12 inches of snow that's oh, that's wow. average snow density so we measure that we weigh it, there's a little formula that we have that'll give us the amount of water actually in centimeters. And then you can divide that by the height of that snow. And these, these are all in centimeters here. And that'll give you the, the approximate density. So 10% snow is fairly average for new snowfall in the Cascades. Uh, probably like five to 6% in the Rockies, you know, real dry snow. And so we do that measurement, clear this board, because that gets cleared every 24 hours. And we can then so, monitor the So the what was that snow. board? What was the difference between the two boards? This, they both do the same thing. This one just is hooked to our telemetry so we can view it from somewhere else. We don't have to actually physically come here and go, how much snow do we have? It takes a measurement every 15 minutes. Generally look at, you know, hourly. So are we accumulating an inch of snow an hour or, you know, two or three centimeters an hour? And that big stake out there is our, that's our, our total snow pack, our height of snow. Currently at about, oh, 228 centimeters. Again, all in metric here. While that's going on, I've taken a, uh, a temperature of the snow surface, which is zero, not surprisingly. And each one of these represents one of our avalanche paths that we control. And it's how much snow has fallen since the last time we did control work there. Since we're going into a rain period, we'll probably clear everything once it's all done. But as you can see, like, uh, a few of these boards have 10 centimeters on there. So 10 centimeters of snow has fallen since the last time it was patrolled. One of the things we do is look at the penetration in the snow. That's where we use this. Uh, many common way, you know, is to use like foot penetration or ski penetration. That can vary with size of the, of the shoe or the weight. We just use this one, it's always the same, we know. So like today, We've got about uh, close to 10 centimeters before a layer is hit in the snowpack. Digging here real quick. So what I'm working on here is isolating a column of snow. We look, want to look at the layers within the snowpack. Then we're going to do a little test to see how how stable or, or looking actually for instabilities within those layers. So what I'll do, I'm isolating the column now. It's approximately 30 centimeters square. And we, we're going to do a compression test. We start with 10 taps from the wrist, 10 from the elbow, 10 from the shoulder. And we're just looking for any collapse or... So there we go. We had one at this level. Not a very clean shear, but a shear just the same. We'd make note of that layer. I can continue with that. One 
more here. <clears throat> Let me measure that that depth. Uh, it's approximately 25 centimeters down from the surface. So that might be a layer of concern for us. We know we've done control work in all our paths and we've eliminated that layer. So at this point, it's not a concern for us, but maybe in, a, in an undisturbed snowpack in the backcountry, that layer uh, could be of concern. Yeah, the biggest thing for avalanches is having a, a hard layer, you know, a bed surface, some kind of a weak layer that's going to be the, the instability, and then, and then that slab above that. And <clears throat> we're looking for the bigger difference there is in hand hardness uh, between those layers, the more likely that those layers are going to, to be the, the avalanche layer. Often with these tests, we'll do it a couple of times just because of variability within the snowpack. And you can see, if we look out around the snow surface, we can see the effects of the rain, recent rain, and all these drain channels. So we might have a, <clears throat> a very distinct weak layer in one spot and then we move over a few feet and, it, and it's gone because of the drain channel through that area. So you gotta take, you know, take the variability into account. Um, I don't know if you can see with your lens there, the, uh, the different layers here. I try to tease out a few of these. You can see with those, we have soft, firm layer, soft layer again, another firm layer, a couple of crusts within the snowpack. So you're going to see a lot of, a lot of structure within the snowpack. And that's really just telling you structure and depth, right? Yep. So that gives you an idea. You kind of know how much snow is in each avalanche chute. Yep. Kind of gives you an idea where the soft layers might be. Right. How, how deep. And is the shearing usually layer. happen in the soft layers? Yep. yep. Okay. Yeah, it's usually right on that interface which is where that, in that compression test, where that one released about 25 centimeters down. So with that, we take that information back and uh, get a weather forecast for the day. And from there, we develop our avalanche plan, yeah, you know, avalanche hazard and outlook for the day for the highway.